Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include a Manitou incline 24 hour record, high school sub four minute mile frenzy, and an FKT prize purse? What if an FKT had a prize purse? This is something I've never heard before until this past week when Washington Bulgars FKT record holder Jason Hardrath brought it to my attention. This concept comes courtesy of Raymond Fong, who on April 29th, 2021, set the Rainbow Mountain Direct FKT west of Las Vegas, car to car in 145.05. One hour, 56, we'll say. Top of Rainbow Peak. Let's go. This challenging scramble route features some class five climbing so not your average trail run FKT. Put out the challenge on Instagram that he'd pay $300 cash to anyone who breaks his time with it standing for at least one month minimum. He also ponied up some cash for the ladies with $200 for the first female sub two hour effort and $100 for the second. It took some time, but in December of 2021, Travis Soares, made the round trip in 132.54, which still stands today. Travis was able to collect the cash, but what I think is the coolest part of this story is he's paying it forward and himself issuing a challenge that for the next person that breaks his newly established record will earn $400 plus another 20 if you're a Vegas local. This weekend is the annual Dipsy Race, which is the oldest trail race in America dating back to 1905. The 7.4 miler from Mill Valley to Stinson Beach is a classic and one of the more unique formats in the sport. It goes as you please course with no defined route, but also age graded handicaps meant to level the playing field. What does the race mean to you, especially given that it's, you know, the one that you are planning to do this year? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, it's something that I can count on and kind of plan, plan around and will definitely get me you know, out the door and training for at least a month or two a year. You know, it's just a fun community event. I think a lot of people really enjoy it. It's easy to get kind of caught up in it uh, and just swept away with the, the kind of, you know, uh, importance uh, that people place on it, uh, at least locally. This year, participants will have one less trail to use. As per the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, there's a trail closure between White Gate, White Barn to the Panoramic Highway meaning alternate strategies must be developed. I'm not familiar with the ideal route myself for the Dipsy, so please chime in in the comments on how this may affect race strategy. Where are things at with trail running in China? I've been wondering this myself, and I'm not sure if I have any real answers on the state of the sport in mainland China, but it appears we're back in action, at least in Hong Kong. The Action Asia HK50 took place last weekend, with 300 runners taking on the 55 kilometer route, which saw Shiro Take from Japan winning in 546 and Han from Germany winning in 711 for the women. The race was held for the first time in three years and travels over Hong Kong's tallest mountain, Tao Mo Shan. What happens when you combine the Manitou incline with a marathon? Well, quite simply, the inclinathon. Yes, that's 13 laps of the iconic climb at the base of Pikes Peak. Want even more? Why not make the trip up and down for 24 hours straight? That's exactly what Andrea Sansone set out to do this past week. She set out to do 16 laps, but ended up faster than expected through the night after her 3 p.m. afternoon start time. By 8 a.m., she was over 15 laps in and pushed to get 19 by the end. It's just, you kind of have to put this wall up and you just have to go because you can do it. You just have to, you, your mind just has to be there. Her record adds five laps to the previous women's best and is now closer to the men's record set by Brandon Stefanowicz of 22. En route, she also set the record for the women's inclinathon. I've got to give a huge shout out to the ginger runner himself, Ethan Newberry, and of course his wife, Kimberly, for reaching the milestone of 400 Ginger Runner Live episodes this week. Yay! What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live episode 400. We did it. That's it. We're at the top. Nowhere else to go. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone, to the show. We're very, very excited about tonight's episode. Not only because it's 400 episodes of going live every single week with Ginger Runner Live, but we have a wonderful guest, uh, long yes. overdue. This is going to be a super fun episode. Ryan Benduzer, 
at a weekly rate. That's seven years, eight months worth of shows, and truly an incredible achievement that is no doubt appreciated by the entire running community. I recall a few years back, Carl Meltzer was kicked by a moose during the Bighorn 100, so encounters with these animals does happen. This next incident occurred on the Campion Trail near Breckenridge this past week, where a moose with calf was startled and trampled by a woman trail running. She was able to recover, hike out, and drive herself home. Be safe out there, folks. The Grand Union Canal Race took place in the UK this past weekend and popped onto my radar thanks to a tweet from Ellie Greenwood. The 145-mile-long point-to-point race travels from Gas Street Base in Birmingham to Little Venice, London. There were 98 starters this year, and the course is fast. Samantha Amend won overall, her finish time 25 hours 45 minutes. First man was Ian Hammett in 2748. What Ellie was commenting on, and I find amazing, was that for DNF runners, or retirements as they call them on their website, they report not only when and where they drop, but also some notes on why. Some responses I liked include, exhausted, nothing in the tank, too tired, blisters and exhaustion, nothing left. And my favorite, comedy of errors. There has been an absolute explosion in sub four minute high school miles popping off. We of course covered Gary Martin's record breaking mile, breaking Jim Ryan's record from several decades back. But since then things have gotten crazy. Martin was back in action at the Hoka Festival of Miles in St. Louis, where he lowered his personal best in the mile this weekend to 357.87. Perhaps more amazingly, Connor Burns, a high school junior, also broke four minutes, finishing just behind Gary in 358.83. This is the first time ever that two high schoolers have broken four in the same race. On top of this, Florida high school senior Reinhardt Harrison ran a 359.33 at the Golden South Mile. 352, It makes him the 16th all time and fourth this year. We're now into June and we're still seeing speed record attempts kicking off on some of the nation's long trails. One I'm particularly interested in following is Wit Weisbrom, aka El Matador, attempt on the self-supported Pacific Crest Trail or PCT record. All right, it's uh, 510-ish. I started my watch about a minute ago, so here we go. He kicked off his journey yesterday on the border of Mexico and will be aiming for the self-supported record held by Heather Anderson of 60 days, 17 hours, 12 minutes. What does self-supported mean in this context? Well, he will be carrying all his own camping gear, food and water, with resupplies only coming from resupply boxes mailed to himself at spots along the way. He says he will not set foot inside of a car for the duration of the hike, meaning any resupply point that is off the route will also need to be walked to. Bronco Billy, AKA Jeff Browning, turned up for his first 100 miler of the year at the Scout Mountain Ultras in Idaho. Hey, I'm Luke. I'm Tanae. We're the race directors of Scout Mountain Ultras. We're up here at the Mink Creek group site, getting everything ready for the race this weekend. We're about 18 hours out from the start. Uh, super excited to have everybody up here to gather and have a great time. Um, and we're gonna be pretty much offline for the rest of the weekend. We can't wait to see you guys and have a good time. We're going to have a beautiful weekend. Jeff was doing some math late in the race with 21 miles to go to see if he could squeak in under the course record he recalled being in the 20 hour, 23 minute range. He thought, no chance. After winning in 20, 38, 36, he didn't think much of it until later on someone looked up the actual course record, which to his surprise was 20, 39, 02, meaning he broke it by 26 seconds. Lesson learned, according to Jeff, always stay focused to the end, you just never know. 58-year-old Ruperto Romero continued his winning ways with a victory at this past weekend's San Diego 100 miler. The two-time Angeles Crest 100 champ was second out of the gate and took the lead before mile 36 Pine Creek Aid Station, holding it on to the finish. On the ladies' side, Katharina Lawn took the win in 2201, 
moving her way up through the field, finishing ninth overall. Another big race took place this past week in SoCal, and by big, I don't mean number of participants, but instead feet of climb. The annual Baldy Marathons is a West Coast version of the Barkley. There were five starters this year, also comprised of five loops with a 60-hour cutoff time and featuring over 50,000 feet of gain. We saw the seventh ever finisher of the event as Derek Wright completed all five laps in exactly 54 hours. Hey, we got him coming in right at 4 p.m. Way to kill it, buddy. Another 100 mile finisher. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! He was the only finisher this year. Thanks to AJW, AKA Ages of Whizzle, I Run Far's column, we've got a couple of Western State stories to follow as we head closer to the race at the end of the month. First is the return of Jim Howard, who will be coming back to the race for the fifth time and 44 years after his first finish in 1978. He may be best known for his historic 1983 showdown with Jim King, where he won by just one minute. Yeah, then they have the audacity, he's 50 yards behind. <laughs> so he pulls up and, you know, and so you try to go with him, you know, and, and he got a little ahead and I felt like I started to close and then he pulled up. Scared. I was running scared, but he was running strong all day, and I didn't know how much he still had in it. And so when I passed him, I didn't know if he was going to respond. And, and I, my impression was that he did. We'll also be watching Megan Canfield, who will be racing for the 60 and over record, currently held by Western States Board President Diana Fitzpatrick of 2352. She has nine top 10 finishes, and this will be her 13th time running. A look ahead to this weekend, I'll be in attendance at the inaugural Ring the Springs 100 miler in Colorado Springs, which looks to be a good time. We'll have coverage and results to share next week. If you're in the area, come on out to America the Beautiful Park on Friday for an outdoor rec recreation expo, or hang out with us throughout the weekend as we watch runners finish up their 100 mile journey Saturday and Sunday. Thanks for tuning in to episode 204 of Outhouse News. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to support the show, please join Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each and every week. If you'd like to own this custom pair of one-off Jam Jam sunglasses, which comes with a certificate of authenticity, or shop for merchandise, head over to mountainoutpost.com. We'd like to mention by name our top level supporters. At the $100 level, Brian Sands. At the $50 level, Squirrels Nut Butter, Mark Grabowski, Peter and Patty Curry. At the $25 level, Carrie Savage, Grandpa Man, Michael Perez, Steve De La Cruz, and York Beach Runner. Finally, have a shitty week. <laughs>